sure you've heard it said, and maybe you've even said it, things happen for a reason. Yeah, things happen for a reason. That's something people say. Usually when something difficult has happened that doesn't really make sense, and in an attempt to make some sense out of it or to find a silver lining, people will say, things happen for a reason. But do they? Today I want to talk about this idea of things happening for a reason and what that means whenever difficult things happen in our lives. As I talk about this important topic, please be sure to subscribe to this channel as well as click the bell so that you're notified of future videos. You know, there are a lot of things that are difficult in life that we don't quite understand why they happen. We want to make sense of them. We want to find something rational in an irrational world. And an easy statement is, things happen for a reason. Do they? And if they do, do we like the actual reason? Let me give you some examples. For the last year, there's been a war in Ukraine. Thousands of people have been killed. Villages and cities have been demolished. There's been great suffering. The global food uh, supply has been upended because Ukrainian food uh, products can't be shipped to the rest of the world. All kinds of suffering because of that war. Did it happen for a reason? What about the recent earthquake in Turkey and Syria, where thousands of people were killed as buildings fell on them, and Hundreds of thousands more have been left homeless. Did that happen for a reason? On any given day in the US, some random person walks into a school with an automatic rifle and shoots up a number of kids and their teachers. Does that happen for a reason? Well, yes, those kinds of things, there are often reasons behind them, and we don't like the reasons. We don't want to talk about the real reasons, because those real reasons often have to do with people's quest for power and their desire for control. Greed is involved, corruption is involved, and, and we're not sure how to deal with the enormity of these problems. And, and by the way, if you didn't know, part of the reason there was such devastation in Turkey was that the president allowed for building codes not to be enforced, the Turkish president. So that's causing a big scandal there. So there are all kinds of reasons, and we don't like those reasons. But suffering happens in other ways. Many of us cause our own suffering. We cause our own suffering because of our own addictions, our desires to control life. We tell our things in the middle of the night and ruminate on negative things and keep ourselves up. We often cause our own pain. And we don't want to admit that we often cause our own pain and that we could alleviate our own suffering if we dealt with what was happening in our lives. Do things happen for a reason? Many things do. And we don't want to face those reasons and we don't want to sort those reasons out. We'd rather ignore them. But here's part of the reality of life's pain. Pain and suffering, for some reason, are part of the design of life. We know that if we simply pay attention. Each year, the springtime begins and new life is born, and that life matures over the summer. And then in autumn, it begins to wither and fade and die until winter falls and there's a dormancy that occurs. That's the cycle. It's a cycle built into nature. It's a cycle built into human beings and animals. We're born. We live. Eventually, we will die. And for many of us, prior to our death, we'll experience diminishment and pain. And that's part of the cycle. This is what happens. And it's important for us to recognize that so that we can 
embrace and live through that cycle. And as we do, as I do, I find great comfort on a spiritual level from the words of Jesus who said that, you know, the rain falls on good people and people who are not so good. The sun shines on good people and people who aren't so good. See, it's, it's not about anything we do so much as this is the design of life. But I think where real faith is important, not faith in creeds, not dogmas, not that kind of faith, but real faith, faith that helps us with life, is when we are able to see the difficulties in life and still find hope and find reasons to live and reasons to go forward. I find this kind of faith captured in the writing of Elie Wiesel in his book, Night. The book, Night, captures his experience of being in a Nazi concentration camp. And he tells the story of one day being, all the prisoners being marched past the gallows, seeing the bodies of their comrades hanging on the gallows left there to rot until they would fall off on their own. And one of the people hanging from the gallows was a boy who was a favored boy in the camp. And he was sentenced to death because as he was starving, he stole a morsel of food. And for that, he was hung. And as the prisoners were marching by, looking at the gallows, one of them called out, my God, where is God? And Wiesel's response, there, God is hanging from the gallows. What he's saying in that affirmation is that even in the horrific moments of life, there is a presence, a strength that pulls us forward, that gives us vision for another day that evokes in us a trust in life's ability to continue even in the face of desperate circumstances. I think it's important for us to nurture that faith in our own lives. It's a kind of faith that comes from authentic spiritual practice. When we embrace the pattern of life and realize that life is a cycle that continues through birth and death and rebirth, that life continues to continue even through the most difficult things we can experience. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, share this video with others, make some comments so that I can respond and have, we can have some dialogue, and know that I really appreciate the time you spend on Spirituality Beyond Borders. Have a great day.